All right, this is the big dog proving trigonometric identity. Now, a lot of people really struggle with this, uh, but there is a lot of it. So you've got to embrace it and get started and come up with a methodical way of working through it and practice them because there's some tricks uh, to how to do it. All right, let's do a question. All right, this is pretty good. This is one of hundreds of identities that you could find online if you Googled trigonometric identities. Uh, now, the way to prove this. We're saying all of this is equal to all of this. Now, if we can make this side look like that side, and they look the same, then we've proven it. If we can make this side look like that side, and they look the same, then we've proven it. That's the basic idea. Now, the way to set this up. This is called our LHS, our right-hand side. And this is called our RHS, our right-hand side. And the polite way to do things is to work on one of these sides. Uh, you can work on one of the other sides as well, but you kind of work on them one at a time. So you write it like this, LHS equals. Now the reason I'm working on the left-hand side first, this is one of those little tricks. If this is one single term, it's kind of a simplified thing, right? This, however, is two terms, and it looks like I can start simplifying it. So if you've got two sides and one of them looks more complicated than the other, start working on it and try to simplify it so it looks more like this one. Okay, what can I do? Well, let's try to add those two terms together. First of all, I'll just write it out again. And now that I've got my left-hand side written out, uh, I'm going to try to smoosh those two fractions together. And I can do that by multiplying this fraction top and bottom by this denominator and multiplying this fraction top and bottom by this denominator. So what I'll get is 1 minus cos theta times 1 plus cos theta, because that's going to be the common denominator when I multiply that by that and that by that. And then that's going to be all over this times 1 plus cos theta plus this times 1 minus cos theta. All right, so what does that look like now? Still a fraction. 1 plus 1 is 2. Oh, there's a 2 there. Maybe that, that'll come good later. There's a cos theta minus a cos theta there. So cos theta minus cos theta is gone. So my whole top of this fraction is just 2. Now, this is uh, 1 minus cos theta, 1 plus cos theta. We've seen that pattern before. We're going to end up with 1 times 1, which is 1. And then uh, negative cos theta times positive cos theta is negative cos squared theta, or negative cos theta squared. Um, now, the negative cos theta times 1, the positive cos theta times 1, they're going to cancel each other out. All right. Now, from here, well, we're not too far away. Uh, what about 1 minus cos squared theta? Where have I seen that before? Well, 1 minus cos squared theta reminds me of the uh, Pythagorean identity, right? Because sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, which we can uh, rejig a little bit to say 1 minus cos squared theta equals sine squared theta. So that 1 minus cos squared theta on the bottom here, we can rewrite as 2 over 1 minus cos squared theta. Ah, sorry, 2 over sine squared theta. Okay. Um, I'm pretty much done here, right? Um, because this is the same as 2 times 1 over sine squared theta. And 1 over sine squared theta is the same as cosec squared theta. So I've got 2 times cosec squared theta, or just... 2 cos x squared theta. I uh, probably don't need that little multiply sign in there. Okay, and we finish this by saying tick left hand side equals right hand side proven. All right, so a couple of little tricks here. Um, we look at the more complicated side and we try to simplify the more complicated side until it looks like the simpler side. Uh, we keep in the back of our mind the Pythagorean identity because with trig stuff it happens all of the time. And then we keep in mind those reciprocal functions.
Okay, that is uh, one trig identity of hundreds that you could prove. Why don't we do another one while we're here? So let's prove that sine theta plus cos theta all squared plus sine theta minus cos theta all squared is equal to 2. Now just before we start, what a crazy result, what a miraculous result. doesn't matter what that number is, sine 45 plus cos 45 plus sine 45 minus sine 45 squared and squared, your answer is going to be 2. Whoa. Okay, uh, now what are we going to do with this? Well, this is my complicated side. And this is my sort of simple side. So the goal here for me is going to be taking the left-hand side, this very complicated side, and making it look like this uh, simpler side. So we say that left-hand side equals, and we write all this out a second time. And now that it's all written out, I can, I can clue you in a little bit of a tip. Sometimes when you're doing these equations, things look worse before they get better. So what I'm going to do here is expand this and I'm going to expand this, and I think it's going to really stretch out, and then hopefully a bunch of stuff just cancels down and I end up with the number 2. That's my hope. So, let's see. So, sine theta times cos theta, so sine theta, uh, cos theta. Um, so I'm going to get sine times sine, which is uh, sine squared theta. I'm going to get cos times cos, which is cos squared theta. But I'm going to get sine theta times cos theta twice, right? Because I'm going to get sine theta times cos theta, and I'm going to get cos theta times sine theta. So I'm going to get two of those. Um, okay, so good, so far so good. Uh, now I'm going to need to do the same here. So that'll be sine theta times sine theta, which is sine theta squared, uh, sine theta squared. I'm going to get uh, negative cos theta times sine theta, which will be negative... Uh, sine theta cos theta. But again, I'm going to get that twice because I'm going to multiply uh, this by the cos theta and I'm going to get the negative cos theta by the sine theta. So there's going to be two of those and you should be spotting something while I do that. And then I'm going to get negative cos theta times negative cos theta, which is positive cos theta squared. All right, this is a bit distracting. Now, what am I seeing? It looks like things have gotten worse, but We've got 2 sine theta cos theta, we've got negative 2 sine theta cos theta, so they're going to disappear. I have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. I have sine squared theta, another sine squared theta, so I can group those, right? So plus sine theta plus sine squared theta. So I actually end up with two of those. And I have uh, cos squared theta and cos squared theta, so I actually have two of those as well. Now remember we're looking for the number 2. We want that to spit out the number 2. And you see a 2 there, and you see a 2 there, and that's looking good. Uh, so we've got a common factor of 2. Theta plus cos squared theta. And then you look at sine squared theta and cos squared theta, you see the Pythagorean identity, so you say that 2 times 1 is 2, and you celebrate because now you know, tick the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Proven. Okay, so there's another little tip. Sometimes things get really wild, and then they come back down again. Um, these trig identities, they take practice. Practice.